Friday in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and uh, it's been a really rainy and cool day today. There's a possibility of some snow flurries, but uh, they're saying it's going to warm up too quick on Sunday for it to stick. So uh, no snow so far this year. What a difference from last year when we had snow in November, in the early part. Do you ever feel alone? Now, don't mix up confusion with solitude and alone. Sometimes it's good to have some solitude that is peace and quiet. And uh, we certainly enjoy that on the mountaintop in Tryon. Uh, but alone, it's not a very nice feeling. Uh, and as a matter of fact, a newspaper did a survey recently about the most common problems people have. The first one was fear. The second one was worry. And the last one was loneliness. The definition of loneliness is being without company, cut off from others, sad from being separated from others. Uh, certainly, we find that kind of loneliness in the Bible. Uh, the woman at the well was cut off from society because of her vocation, because of her lifestyle. In John chapter 4, verse 7, the lepers were separated by society and social laws which said that uh, it was thought that leprosy was a very contagious disease therefore there were leper colonies and separation from the rest of the society. Adam after he was created it says in Genesis chapter 2 verses 18 through 22 uh, God looked down and said it's not good for man to be alone. And so we have this feeling of loneliness, separation, and it's not just separation from society or from social uh, things that are going on, but it can also be loneliness because we're feeling separated from God. That's spiritual loneliness. It can happen to those that are not saved, those that don't have a personal relationship with God, and the fact that they realize that they have friends, they realize that they have social contact, but what they don't feel is the presence of God. And so they can feel alone even though they may be surrounded with people. It's also possible that people that are in the midst of sin and separation from God because of the sin, because God can't be in the presence of sin, uh, they feel alone and separated from God because of the sin. The sin is a barrier between they and their relationship with God. We find that on the cross of Calvary, and you probably have already said to yourself, well, Jesus was without sin. But at the cross of Calvary in Matthew 27, verse 46, it says, he took the sin of all of mankind on him. That is not that he sinned, but that he allowed us to place our sin on him to pay the price for our sin. And he cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yes, he felt alone, separated from God by sin, not his, but ours. It's a diagnosis that you can make pretty easily in your life. You become discouraged, depressed, you have an inner ache, you have a longing to feel love, and you feel separated, loneliness. It's one that I can certainly remember my father crying himself to sleep after my mother left us. I remember times myself when I felt alone and it was both because of social, it was because of separation from God. Common causes, of course, are death of a loved one and that can even be a pet. Separation by divorce or separation for a time from a mate. The end of a relationship which is broken. Children leaving home. It can be by a close friend moving away or you moving from them. Uh, loneliness is something that can take the joy out of our lives. Loneliness and a spiritual separation can be even more devastating as, John, as <laughs> David actually cried out to God and said, uh, Lord, my sin is ever before me, separating him from his relationship with God. What is the cure? Well, first of all, you need to admit it to yourself. You need to admit that you feel lonely and separated inside. Secondly, you need to confess it to others so they can come alongside you and help. And most importantly, you need to confess it to God. Then you need to find the cause. What is the cause? Is it sin, social, 
or is it a event of life that has caused you this loneliness? Then my recommendation, recommendation is that you mark your Bibles or even right now with Romans chapter 8 verses 35 through 39 because you see God's Word has a lot to say about the fact that we're never alone. Here's what Romans chapter 8 verses 35 through 39 says. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life or death or angels nor principalities nor powers or things present or things to come no, not heights, not depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Never alone. God, God certainly has expressed that to us clearly in the Bible. We may have moved away from him because of our sin, but he's never alone, and we are never alone. And Jesus, when he cried out from the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, certainly we also need to balance that with John 16, 32. When Jesus said, the Father is with me, and he is. Even if our sin is separating us from his presence, he's right there, just waiting for us to call out to him, admitting to self that we've sinned, admitting to others that we feel separated, admitting to God that we feel separated. We don't have to be alone and we don't have to feel alone. All we have to do is remember his promises from Romans 8, 35 through 39, that nothing, absolutely nothing can separate us from his love and his presence. That's your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.